It is 719, 19 minutes after 7 o'clock. Sunny today, look for a high of 75. It's going to be just a really, really nice day today. Right now in the Arklatax, you're looking at 54 degrees with sunshine. Joining us via phone this morning is Teresa Oki with Americans for Prosperity. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks for having me on this morning. It's bright and sunny in Rogers, Arkansas, too. A nice break from the rain. Uh, yeah, it finally stopped raining. I thought we were going to start building an ark or something. It was raining so much <laughs> down in this part of the country, but uh, it's, it's going to be a nice day. All right. Uh, with Americans for Prosperity, you guys do a great job in talking about issues that face us financially. Let's talk about taxes for a moment, because in Northeast Texas in particular, we have several referendums coming up on the ballot. Uh, we've got a couple of school districts looking for more money to do what they do. So they're looking at uh, a couple of bond issues. We're looking at a bond issue to possibly raise taxes to pay for a nine-mile stretch of rural highway in Northeast Texas. Uh, from your experience and your perspective, what should taxpayers be looking at when they go to the polls to vote on these particular proposed tax increases? Well, in regards to school first, I'll take on that one first. Look, in the last two decades, we doubled spending. It's actually three decades. We doubled uh, spending on education. And if you look at the testing results, we haven't had a double improvement in education testing. In fact, we've moved up educational test scores by one point. If you look at where we stand internationally, the United States has... Uh, sunk to 23rd, I believe, in science and 25th in math. So education spending does not transfer into a better education. Uh, and, and people there in Texarkana need to consider the value or what they're getting for their education dollars. I, I would talk to the school district about metrics, how have test scores improved, what are you doing? Because throwing money at the problem, especially in education, has not worked. Mm, mm, mm. Now, when it comes to roads in Texas, we pay a gas tax. That's 20 cents on, I believe, 20 cents of every, every dollar uh, is gas tax. Now, this proposed uh, bond is a $35 million bond. The county will pay roughly 20%. The state pays 80%. But the way I'm figuring it, we're going to pay twice for the same stretch of highway because even though the county, my county tax dollars, will be paying for the county's portion of this uh, bond, I'm still paying the gas tax. That doesn't make any sense to me. Exactly. And let's, let's get down to the real figure. Taxpayers pay 100% of that tax. And not only do they pay 100% of the tax, as da uh, gas taxes go up, it is proven Stanford University released a study last year that says gas taxes and diesel taxes are entirely passed on to the consumer through the cost of higher clothes, food, furniture, anything that's shipped. Uh, prices go up as gas taxes go up. So, you know, taxpayers are putting 100% of this bill, and, and you and I visited a little bit beforehand. The, the thought of, and we've, we've been through this with the stimulus package, building these massive stimulus projects, these infrastructure projects, they don't create long-term jobs. And so if I were in the city advocating for the highway, you know, you've got it backwards. You have to attract the jobs first through lower taxes by expanding your tax base because of the creation of jobs. That's when you build projects. The philosophy of build it and they will come is, you know, about as fictional or about as accurate as the movie Field of Dreams. <laughs> now, speaking of that, on the national level, what are we looking at when it comes to the budget battle on Capitol Hill? Well, I think what you see is you see Republicans strongly advocating for, you know, getting our house in order because, let's be honest, we're broke and uh, it will just be a few years before our country, uh, the economy implodes. You're going to see job loss if we try and fix that through higher taxes. And so you see uh, Senate Democrats and House Republicans sitting down and trying to find out, uh, find a solution. And you know what? I hope that Republicans do not cave in and they fix our long-term spending problems yeah, uh, in these negotiations negotiations because it is a long-term problem we're sitting here and we're looking at raising the debt ceiling and to me this is this is where i think that as americans we all need to take a look at our own lives and our own spending because if we will allow our government to continue extend credit when they when the government has proven to be 
a bad consumer. What does it say about us as a society? Well, I, you know, I think that I, I have my kids here. We're dropping them off at school here in just a few minutes. They're in the car with me. I'm not going to hand them a country that's bankrupt. I'm not going to put a Band-Aid on the problem, which is uh, the solutions or the compromises that we seem to be getting out of D.C. and say, oh, look, we did a great job. We fixed it. I think that the political reality is is if we don't fix it now, uh, when? Because mm-hmm. there's not much time on our clock left. So. Yeah, and that's something that, uh, you know, Paul Ryan has taken a lot of heat for. But in my opinion, I think we could have even a better budget than what Ryan is proposing. That's one of the reasons I probably wouldn't make a very good congressman. Well, you know, the <laughs> frustrating thing is, you know, there's all this talk about Congressman Ryan's budget, but nobody is addressing President Obama's budget, which, if you look at how he advocates for in his budget for deficit reduction, it's entirely through cutting uh, federal health care programs. It's I think I read this morning it's a $15 trillion cut, uh, and as Forbes magazine noted, it's absolutely going to happen. They're going to cut that through ration care and by the government making decisions of who gets treatment and who doesn't. And uh, to me, I love Paul Ryan because he has the courage to try and fix the problem, mm-hmm. ha- have a real conversation. On the other hand, you have the president who's demagoguing, and when scrutiny under his budget, he's really doing it by rationing health care which yeah. I find unacceptable. Well, sure, and I really have enjoyed watching Paul Ryan take on the president in this issue, and he's not he's not backing down, which I love, unlike some other members of Congress that we know. Well, I know you have Mike Ross there in the 4th Congressional District who says, you know, Congressman Ryan's budget is balancing uh, our deficit on the backs of senior citizens, but he fails to mention that the president's budget absolutely rations health care for senior citizens and is a worse solution uh, for them than what Congressman Ryan proposed. Excellent. Teresa Oki, always a pleasure talking with you, ma'am. Keep up the good work. You too. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Thanks. It is 726, 26 minutes after 7 o'clock. Up next, we've got financial news from Fox, followed by Arklatax Regional News. This is the Voice of Freedom on Freedom 107.